cover us that we might be covered by your blood and that those that hear your word will be doers of your word and Lord we thank you in advance for what you're going to do on our behalf in Jesus holy name we do pray amen amen our scripture was read earlier we're going to forego that on the screen and For the sake of a title, we're going to use the word, don't wait too late. You may be seated. In the absence of our pastors, we want to lift them up as in their journey to Carolina and their duties there and the other officers here, the elders and the members. We thank God for this day. Don't wait too late. Luke 13, 6 through 9, and I'm going to read the NIV version for a second here, and it says, about this time, Jesus was informed that Pilate had murdered some people from Galilee as they were offering sacrifices in the temple. He asked the question, do you think those Galileans were worse sinners than all the other people from Galilee? Is that why they suffered? Not at all, he said. And you will perish too unless you repent of your sins and turn to God. And what about the 18 people who died when the tower in Siloam fell on them? Were they the worst sinners in Jerusalem? No. I tell you again that unless you repent, you too will perish. Then Jesus told this story. A man planted a fig tree in his garden and came again and again to see if there were any fruit on it. But he was always disappointed. Finally, he said to his gardener, I've waited three years and there hasn't been a single fig. Cut it down. It's just taking up space in the garden, in this garden. The gardener answered, Sir, give it one more chance. Leave it alone another year, and I'll give it special attention and plenty of fertilizer. If we get figs next year, fine. If not, then you can cut it down. Don't wait too late. While I was growing up, and even now, there was always a notion that bad things happen to other people and not us. Other people's houses burnt down. Other people got cancer and died. Other people lost their jobs and got put out on the street. It was always other people, not us. But as time passed, I realized that it could, and it eventually even happen to us. And let me, let me let you know that we're no better, or should I say any different, than anyone else. Even if the things that they are going through, we're not going through at the same time. Our scripture points out the fact that we are subject to the same outcome if we don't get
get our business in order. It's not talking about earthly business here. The proclamation goes forth in Luke, just as it did with John the Baptist. Repent, repent, and be baptized. Repentance is not a word that we hear often, even in our churches now. Maybe it's because of the meaning, because it means to change. It means to stop doing something that's not productive or taking you in the wrong direction. It means to stop going in one direction of life, a direction that can be self-destructive, and to turn around and go another way. That's productive and even godly. For the body of Christ, it means to stop breaking the law of God and beginning to obey him. Mark 1 verse 15 says, The time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. Matthew 3, 8 says that our actions should bear fruits worthy of repentance. I'll say that again. That our actions should bear fruit worthy of repentance. When we don't know when our turn will come, Christ keeps admonishing us to repent now and don't wait too late. Christ is forever warning us that we shouldn't put off for tomorrow the things that we should do today. Hebrews 3, 7, and 8 says, Today, if you hear his voice, harden not your heart. Acts 2.38 says, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins. And you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. But even after his repeated warnings, they still didn't get the message. We don't either. So he breaks it down a little bit more. He begins with this man that has planted a fig tree. And if you are any kind of farmer, you know, you make sure you plant your seeds where it will grow good ground and be productive. So he plants the, the seeds in good soil a place that it can be watered and get the right amount of sun light and after giving it time time to grow he comes back to reap the benefits or reap the fruits of his labor but only to find no fruit. So he leaves and returns the next year expecting to find fruit, but there is none. I can imagine he's beginning to get a little upset that this fig tree that he's planted, he's planted in good soil it's receiving plenty of water and it's getting just the right amount of sunlight but it's not producing fruit. But he leaves and comes back a third time. But this time he's lost patience. 
and he calls the gardener and orders him to cut it down. It's just taking up space. But the gardener pleads one more chance, just one more chance, one more year. And during that year, he would give it special attention. And if there's still no fruit, then we'll cut it down. See, this parable shows us the truth about God. God is full of mercy and compassion. He's patient and loving. But God is also a God of judgment. And Christ is warning us that time, that a time of judgment is coming and will come and he goes first to the household of faith. His church, those who have professed to be Christians, that's where the judgment will start. Even now, some of us read and hear this parable and think like we did when I was growing up. That won't happen to me. It's the other people that she's talking about. Don't fool yourself. He's talking about all of us. He's warning us even now that he's planted us individually here in good ground. Here in good ground where we can be watered with the word of truth and, re and receive plenty of not S-U-N, but S-O-N, light to grow and produce fruit. He's given us opportunity after opportunity to bear fruit. But we've taken the word and enjoyed the S-O-N light and we've continued not to bear fruit. I can hear you say, well, what type of fruit are we talking about? The word gives us that. He says in Galatians 5, 22 and 23, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. So are you bearing fruit? Are you showing love instead of hate? Joy in the midst of sorrow? Peace in the midst of confusion? Patience when all around you is going awry. Kindness, when evil speaks against you. Goodness, have you been faithful in what God has given you? See, if we bear those fruits, then we have no need for the law because we are doing God's will. But see, we choose to not do those things and bear those fruits. And with that choice, we are subjected to the law. We are subjected to 
the condemnation of sin because we are not bearing the fruit. He wakes us up every morning and gives us an opportunity to bear fruit. He gives us sight. He gives us the regulation of our minds to know right from wrong, to bear fruit. But we tend to want to wait until tomorrow when tomorrow's not promised we should bear fruit today if you haven't been producing fruit there's still hope remember there was a gardener that pleaded for the fig tree And Christ is our gardener. Though we should be condemned to die for not bearing fruit, he's pleading on our behalf for God to give us one more chance. One more chance to bear fruit. It's not just enough to come to church each week and sit in the pews and hear the word of God and then go home. That's not bearing fruit. <coughs> he wants us to share that love that he's given us, that word that he's given us, the promises that he's coming back for a chosen people. One more chance he's given us. But we have to change our hearts to mirror his heart. He's asking God to give us one more year. But he's going to shake things up a bit. A bit. He gon he's going to make us a little uncomfortable with the way that we are growing. We may face sickness or loss of loved ones. He's shaking us up. We may face disruptions in our marriage or in our relationships. He's digging us up. Children going crazy and doing things out of character. He's digging us up. A government that seems to want to suppress us rather than to serve us. He's shaking us up. He's going to dig up the ground around us and put in fertilizer to stimulate us to grow. And if you know digging you up causes pain. It's uncomfortable. It causes us to make a change in our course of life. We can choose to accept the change and get better, or we can relent to the change and turn away. The choice has always been ours. But God has given us opportunities to make the right choice, to repent. Repent, he said.
if you're in that ground now and you're going through that change and your body may be filled with sickness and you may have lost a loved one or your relationships may not be going the way that you see fit maybe it's time to look to him for the source of your strength see we've gotten into the the method of seeking other people for guidance but he's given us his word and he tells us over and over again I'm here I'm here in the room whatever you need right now I'll provide it whatever you're going through I'll sustain you remember he's trying to get your attention to save you he's coming back but he's coming back for a people that wants to be with him because he's not going to force you to love him to keep his commandments and I found it so inspiring that he kept coming back he kept coming back never giving up on us. He loves us that much that he wants to expel every opportunity that he can to give us eternal life. He's coming back, but he's saying, don't wait too late because eventually judgment will come and he's going to cut those trees down don't wait too late Can't you see the signs of the times? Don't you know that the time is short? And soon the Lord, He will return.
Christ today. 
turn your hearts over to him. Allow him to guide and direct your path. Let the Holy Spirit use you in his service today. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this word that you've given us to inspire us to check ourselves and to do your will and not what we think is right and not think that we have time more time than we think we are but to choose you today to serve you and to do your will we thank you for your mercy that you've shown us each day to give us opportunities after opportunity to return to you and we pray that we won't take that opportunity for granted and we give you true praise and glory for this opportunity in Jesus name we do pray amen amen enjoyed that word this morning. Praise God, don't wait too late. Now we will prepare for a Bible study to study, to dig into the word of God. So I'm going to, uh, we're getting ready to dismiss so that we can transition. And we pray that each and every one of you have enjoyed the services this morning. Amen. So we're going to pray. Father God, we just thank you, Lord the opportunity to come and study your word, give us a ready mind to be able to understand and not only to just understand, but to apply it in Jesus' name.